Ziesk here. Today I'll be showing you how to create these dragon scales in Blender. Uh, it's actually very simple. I start from a basic hexagon and it's just a few modifiers and a few extra basic modeling things that you can do to achieve this effect. Let's hop onto Blender here. And I've just deleted the basic square. I just held X and hit delete. So now what we want to do is create a hexagon or hexagonal prism, whatever you want to call it there. So I'm just going to create a cylinder go to the add cylinder in the bottom here and then change the vertices to six and that's a very basic hexagon perfect all we need and sorry if my computer's a bit laggy i can't really run blender and uh, streamlabs obs here but i hope you guys bear with me i really appreciate it so once you have the hexagon you can just go into edit mode now we're going into the face select we'll select this face right here and then we will select the invert A, invert selection. And then we'll hit X and delete faces. There we go. So we just have this one basic hexagon, or sorry, this one basic square from the hexagon. And now what we wanna do is create a, go back to object mode. Let's go to object, add, or sorry, add. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing today. Empty, plane axes. And then in the properties of the plane axes, we can just go over here to the object properties and then go to the rotation on the Z and put 60. So now once we have that set, we can go back to this rectangle here, go to the modifiers, go to add modifier and then go to array. So once we have array open, now we can hit the object offset and we can select this empty and it essentially uses this as a reference to wrap it around at the specific properties of the empty. To explain that a little further, let's turn relative offset off as well. Let's say I made this empty, say I changed the scale of the X to two. Then it would push that one one extra further, obviously, because it's two times that. So we just keep all it all at one and we just want this to rotate 60 because we know hexagons have angles of 60s all on the interior angles. So we can go back to the cylinder, go to the properties, go to the counts, and let's just turn it up to five or six, six here. Perfect. And we do this because we just want the one scale to wrap around the object here. And we don't want to recreate it on each side. So this is the most efficient way of doing it. I've found we can switch back into edit mode. I just press tab. Once we have this one here, we can right click subdivide. Let's put the subdivisions at two. We could probably just actually let's just use one, honestly. Once you have one, we're going to inset these, holding or pressing I and just scaling it a little bit like that. There we go. That's probably enough scale. But what we want to do is turn on individual so it scales each of these faces individually rather than as a whole. So just in their own little face, it'll scale. Perfect. Now what we want to do is extrude them. So we just hit E, drag them out a bit, like that probably. Doesn't look too bad. And as, as you can see, obviously it scales all the way around, which is exactly what we wanted for this scenario. Now we can move down here, probably just like that. And you can edit these as much as you'd like. We can even edit them once we're completed with the scales that I'll be doing here. Uh, I just found it's easier just to do this basic setup I'm going to go to the edge selector here. I'm going to select this edge, scale it in a teeny bit. So I'll probably do about, let's see, maybe 0.6. Add it to all of them. Yeah, I think that's good. So now let's just do that to the rest of them. There we go. Once we have that done, we can just hit merge and then go first last. And you'll see what this does in a moment here. Once we add our next modifier, just to show you. I'm going to add a subdivision surface and if we didn't have this merge and first and last on you can see once i turn we'll turn merge off first just so it's all off then you can see it doesn't merge the actual ends here and connect them but if we hit merge and then turn off first and last you can see it kind of does the same thing so we want to make sure it does first and last and the distance is 0 0.01 so i think that's pretty good so far I think what I want to do is bring out the scales a bit more so they're a bit more aggressive looking. Since we have the edge select, we can just select this edge, this edge, 
this one and this one and then put them down a bit too far maybe out a little bit more this is all really up to personal preference of course i think that's pretty good maybe down a little bit more so now once we have this we can create another array and this is going to essentially yes yeah, so we're going to use this one on a curve that we'll be creating so it's going to fit a curve uh, we don't have the curve set up yet so what we can do after this go back to object mode go to add there we go curve and i'll just do a basic bezier curve i'm going to scale it up since the radius is just one meter doesn't really matter go back to this one and go check the modifiers once again make sure the curve is the correct curve Okay, so now you see it is kind of messed up and that is completely fine. That's because this is the wrong type of offset we want. We want them to be standing on each other, not going side to side. So if we put this one back to zero, see that it's all just right there. Well, we can see exactly which one we want to do by going like this. Obviously not that one. So I imagine it's this one. I'll turn it to about 0.6. We'll see how that looks. A little too short. As you can see, they're kind of interlocking there. So we can turn it up a bit and just see what works. We don't want to go too much and we don't want to see if we go too much here. You can see that there's a little space in between. That's something we do not want. We'd rather have less space than more. So that's fine. Maybe 0.85. Yeah, looks good. So now it has enough of these to fit the curve, but the issue is it doesn't go with the curve. So what we can do here, I'm going to hit merge again just because it just makes the thing look better overall first and last but to make it follow the curve we're going to add another modifier and add the curve modifier and then we will select the object as the bezier curve now it starts there but it doesn't know which direction to go in there we go let's see here maybe try y nope negative z negative y negative z there we go perfect and that's how you get the object to follow the path the cool thing about the path now is that you can select the Bezier curve, switch it to edit mode, and you can still edit the uh, the Bezier curve and have the object follow it. I don't know if my computer will be able to handle that example here. Yeah, there we go. You can kind of see what I'm referring to here. A bit more we can do with this curve as well, which is really nice and very helpful for the object. I'm just going to move it like that. Uh, if you want to add more points within this curve, you can just select both of the ends, right click and hit subdivide once again. It adds a point there. You can add as many points as you'd like and you can kind of play around with it. There we go though. I'll just keep these two. But the other cool thing with these Bezier curves is that you can select one of them, select one of the points, go up to this menu here. There we go. And we can change the weight and the radius and the tilt. So I'm going to change the radius to point. Well, let's just change it to zero on this one. And let's change the tilt to maybe 260 or something like that. Might be a bit too much. You can kind of see what it does. Okay, let's maybe try like 180. Yeah, I see. That's just to make sure it's not looking like super uniform in terms of the pattern it goes across in. I think it makes it a little, little more unique looking. And one thing I did notice is the scales are going the opposite way that we want. And that's an easy fix. All you do is select the radius on this side back to one. We can keep the tilt. It doesn't really matter which side that's on. We can go back to this one and then change the radius of this to zero. Once this one's at zero, now the scales are going the correct way and it looks good. The subdivision surface is only at like one or two, so it's not a big difference, but once you render it or if you change it in the viewport on the modifier it will look pretty good here we can see i'll attempt to turn it up without my blender crashing the viewport two three but as you can see it obviously starts to get a little bit better and that is how you make the dragon scales in blender i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please leave a like and a comment on what you'd like to see next if you want to see more content from me make sure to hit subscribe with notifications on I hope you guys all have a great day and peace out.